Hi everyone, it is Marie here from Skeins and I'm so sorry, I know this me being late on a Monday seems to be a bit of a, a regular thing, sorry about that, uh, but it was so good, I was up at the mill this morning catching up with what was up there and there's so many yarns coming through and in fact I can let you know about some that have just been receipted in again today, uh, we a whole heap came in again today and there's more that will be coming through during the week as well, which is so exciting because it's been um, we've had so many yarns on order it's been amazing but you know the mill we are just so blessed we are so blessed to have this incredible team that are really passionate about what they do and they have just been working so so hard to get all those yarns out there which is just wonderful really really wonderful so I can't wait to um, get all, everything back in stock and have it all again have it all back in stock again it will be so good um I've had a lovely week I caught up if you hopefully you had a chance I did put a link on the main skeins page but um i got interviewed with suzanne bryan and as part of her off the cuff series that she does on youtube and suzanne is amazing suzanne is one of my favorite techniques knitters she's um i've recommended her before she is just utterly utterly wonderful and if i sort of have an oopsie or i uh, i sort of think mm, how am i going to do that it's always what would suzanne do and i will go and check out her techniques whether they be on youtube or through her site or even on revelry she's got some wonderful tutorials on revelry and she is just as a resource uh source she really is quite quite fantastic so it was really lovely to speak to her again and catch up on her podcast uh yesterday morning so do check that out I've put the link um in uh, the main skeins page and you can go and have a look at that uh, and it was so much fun to catch up with her and I just talked about the mill and what it is that we do at Design Spun and Skeins and I know for many of you regulars you know it you know all that kind of stuff but for those that didn't know what we what we do and what we get up to it was yeah it's loads of fun so I really enjoy that oh and hello Margot Margot is I know does a lot of work with Suzanne and moderating on her page so yeah I did it was so much fun um Margot I really enjoyed that yesterday so yeah it's been good and I've had a neat weekend in week. As you may have noticed, for many of you, I've been a little bit more, a little low profile the last week or 10 days. Uh, and that is because I sort of, I haven't had the week off per se. I've been working at home, but I've had my mum here. Uh, so she was down for, uh, oh, she was down for eight, nine days. And it was lovely. I hadn't seen her since mid August nights last year. And just with, oh, actually, no, tell a lie. I saw her for her birthday in November, but she hadn't been down since mid August nights and she hadn't seen the boys. And both my sons now are taller than she is. So that, that gave her a fright. Um, and it was just nice. It was so lovely to be able to um, have some really good quality time with her, uh, with, and considering that we've all been so, but well, I've been busy across the back. And yeah, and just, you know, when you know that you can't go and visit when you want to during lockdown, it's just really special when you get that time. So that was just so nice. Really enjoyed that time. And while I had that time with her, we just did things like mooch out at home and and um, chat and watch like really like films that we love. I mean, like we watched all the Indiana Jones movies because she loves those. And um, and oh, what did she watch with the boys? And she just howled laughing. Oh, um, the Mr. Bean one that's not Mr. Bean and uh, Johnny English. We watched that as well. It was just fun. It was just really, really, really fun. So it was great. And because we had that time together and I had some time to sort of breathe and relax, I got my knitting mojo back that sort of went on hiatus for a couple of weeks, um, which is nice because I missed it. I'd, I've been, um, I think I mentioned it here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Deb from Outlaws suggested that I get hold of... Um, do some crochet which is what I actually have been doing and it was great piece of advice from Deb uh, because it allowed me just to do something with my hands but I just couldn't get my head around things because I really I cast it on but I hadn't literally cast on the the neck but hadn't done anything much with with it which was gold wing which of course I've been talking about that I've been wanting to work on now for a number of weeks so I have now made some great progress. Look at that. 
he really happy with it really happy with it so i had a good chat to ethan about this on thursday so i did catch up with him from home and it's so good to catch up with ethan too it was so really weird i must have it not having him every week so it was good so good to catch up and if you haven't caught up on that episode one of the things that we talked about were two things mainly that we talked about one was short rows and the other one was increases and uh in terms of the short row she had written into this patent german short rows which if i'm brutally honest i'm not a massive fan of um i can do them but i just they don't set my world on fire so i just did in this pattern a simple wrap and turn instead and knitted it back and it's invisible so and it's one of those i guess it's just one of those little quirks i just kind of didn't understand what's the point of putting in this overcomplicated german short row when you didn't have to i guess that's the pragmatist in me anyhow uh the other thing we talked about is she has this invisible make one left increase which i sort of kind of struck once before and i think i actually ignored it and did my own thing um, but in this particular instance the way it was charted i just really couldn't quite figure out what the benefit of that increase was and knowing that ethan is an absolute technical whiz on all of these things i thought well i'll save this question up for ethan because he'll know he is so um so good with all those sorts of techniques and actually he was great so if you caught up with the video and you want to know the difference he's got a fantastic explanation and primarily it's the invisible part of the description is actually a little bit misleading it's not completely invisible and i hopefully can probably show you just there you can because you can actually slightly see the slight bumpiness there in between with the color so you can actually see it but i can now see the benefit with it what it is with that increase is that it just sort of maintains the tensioning particularly in between the color work here so when you go to block this color work that color work will actually block out much flatter so i do now get the rationale behind it so i did i um did that increase and i know that once that i block this and now looking at it it's like okay all right i understand it now i can see why this is going to work that way so once i got my head around that it was as good as gold and i have been cooking with gas with this so i'm using my county oopsie I'm using the county so i'm now heading through the yellow into the green so which is great so i think by the time i get to the end of my color work i will actually think i may have done a full rainbow um through to the purple which will be brilliant so i'll get a full um range of color through that color work which i'll be which is brilliant really brilliant what i wanted and of course my oatmeal southlander and the two of them are playing beautifully together i'm really happy with it um, it's just nice to have the mojo back so i'm going to get stuck into that again tonight and i have to admit i saw um lisa's progress she posted that up on speakeasy on her one which is in sock petition featherston oh it's looking so good really she's got both the sleeves done now and the yoke and she's now working down the body looks i have to admit i saw that this morning and i was like oh, it's just the inspiration that i needed you know to keep it going and keep it moving i was just like i love it absolutely love it so no really really delighted with that so that's the progress that i'm doing and let's just have a scroll down here and i'm a little bit um little bit betwixt in between this morning oh every oh wow well, everyone's here thank you so much i'm so sorry honestly i'm really sorry that i'm late this morning it has been um it has been one of those crazy old crazy old days but it's monday you see and it's the one day that all of us work together and so we all sort of madly trying to catch up with each other now the other thing that um got launched across the weekend well, actually towards the, well, across the time that I was at home which I absolutely loved and I thought I could talk about a bit today because I know many of you have been chatting about it and I think a few of you may I know one or two of you may have test knit this but the lovely Libby Johnson has popped a new pattern out which I know went out into the wardrobe toolbox it's called Maiden and it's this really delightful really really delightful simple raglan sweater 
this is, and this is what I love about the sweater. You know, it was what I love about a lot of Libby's designs is they're totally wearable. They're really practical, practical pieces. And this one is absolutely no exception. Um, and it is a four ply uh, sweater or, or jumper with a, yeah nice raglan detailing because I know a lot of um, designs that she does she has a set in sleeve that she absolutely adores but a number of people do actually prefer a raglan sleeve of which this one is and what I do like about it is it has got these really nice little details like around the sleeve and the neckline and there is also this beautiful little roll folded over hem. I'm a big fan of the fold over hem. I did it uh, in my Rambler. Um, I really like that hem. It's, it's a me thing, but she's got this beautiful little piece of secret detail under there that if you flip it up, there's this lovely little band of colour. And it's just that, just those little details that make it quite special. And I love all this detailing around the collars and the cuffs. Um, she has done this in a... a, a a yarn that was a mixture of silk, Falklands wool, and uh, linen or cotton, I think it was. So it's a beautiful sort of a rustic yarn. But the nice thing about this is that it is done essentially for a full ply. And there are a load of different yarns that you could substitute into it. So it is done um, a gauge of 25 stitches to 37 rows on a 3.25 millimeter needle. So that sits at smack in um, full ply territory a lot of the full plies that we have are actually around that 25 26 stitch tension to, on the needle size so getting gauge shouldn't be too much of an issue at all and because the pattern is actually written with um, seven and a half centimeters of positive ease so it is actually designed you can actually have it designed to, to be quite loose if you choose that if you find that your gauge if you go to knit your gauge and it is actually slightly firmer like 26 stitches as opposed to 25 you know with the positive ease you, that's a very easy adjustment to make if you're only that one stitch off so Positive ease, believe me, can be your friend. So I've just gone and pulled some yarns together because we have so many options that will be so perfect for this sweater. So, so perfect. And with those little bits of detailing around the collar and the cuffs, it's the sort of thing that you don't necessarily have to run out and buy colours for that. You may actually already have colours in your stash. And to be honest with you, it could actually be one of those situations where you have those yarns in your stash where you think, actually, I only need a little bit. And what is she saying here with the contrast yarns? She is saying, yeah, see, so she's saying here, that in colours B and C, which are the two contrasts, that you're only looking at anywhere between 30 and 50, 50 metres for, um, depending, 30 for the smallest size, 50 for the largest size, in those contrasts. So that's really, I mean, that's barely a third of a ball. So if you're wanting to knit this, I think one of the things that you can do is be a little bit adventurous, actually. You don't even need to necessarily um, stay within the range because it is actually only around the the collar and the cuff so one of the things that I would do because remember this is me I'm I make things up as I go along one of the things I would be inclined to do is actually look at those really fun yarns like say for argument's sake if I had the county and I had some of this county left over after knitting um, and I had you know enough that I would know whether it be like in these colors here I would then go and have a look in my stash and actually match up and go right I've got that county in those colors or I've got some Noro left over the Noro silk garden that I was using for the Rambler what else can I put with that I can put a charcoal and then go and select my main colors around those accent colors that I already have so it's actually a perfect opportunity if you've got some like beautiful sock yarn or some lovely indie dyed hand yarn or something fun like some Noro or um, what else could you have have hidden there or even some sock petition if you've had something from another project and you've got a few of those colors left it's really a really good way to use up those four ply scraps particularly if you've like been doing some shawl knitting you quite often end up with about 50 odd meters left over, um, you know, like a 
part, small part of a skein or a hank left over after a shawl project, this that's what I would do. I would go and hunt out all of those, um, weigh them up, see what you've got, see if you've got about that, that meterage there, and then build your color blocks around that. And, and it really doesn't, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit different in terms of its texture. Um, because it's on the collar and cuffs, it really doesn't matter. It's there as an accent or a feature. Um, so it shouldn't make too much difference. You want it to stand out. So if it's a slightly different texture, it's not necessarily the end of the world. Um, and some yarns that I think that would go really, really well with it is I've gone and plucked out uh, Orb Fine. And I've plucked out Orb Fine because I know that there are a lot of uh, dyers that use this uh, twist on twist base for some of their uh, hand dyed yarns. So if you're wanting them to be the same and you have some of those left over, this is a really good, good one to move together. Now, look at those three together. This is, um, uh, what have we got there? Is it Orchid or Shiraz? Shiraz, um, Sprout and Mist. But I mean, don't those go fantastically well together? I mean, you could have that as your main colour and those as your accents or either way around. But I also pulled this one out. I mean, I mean, if you wanted to go something bolder, you could go bolder there. If you wanted to be a little bit more subtle, oops, you could be subtle there. Or even if you wanted to be tonal, you could be tonal there. There are so many different combinations. Orb Fine would look fantastic in that. It would give you a very smooth looking sweater. It would be something to be very, very wearable um, and really comfortable to pop over. And in that vein, another yarn that would be like that as well in terms of being very, very smooth and comfortable is um, Baby Bandit. The colours in Baby Bandit are so contemporary and really grown up and just utterly beautiful. And I just think that they would be amazing in that pattern I really really do um, those are just three that I've gone and pulled out there just from random I think would look incredible you can have a pop of color with a very neutral base but the other nice thing about baby bandit is that you've got there's this this four ply base is the standard four ply that most uh, dyers will use in terms of a base of four ply yarn whether it be a sock base with nylon or not, not with nylon but if you've got some of that sitting around at home and you've got some left over and you see these beautiful colours and accents or speckles or whatever you may have in there, um, quite often you might be able to match those up in something in Baby Bandit and to give you that beautiful pop of colour on your cuffs and your neck and then match it with a contemporary colour out of that. So definitely don't discount Baby Bandit when it comes to knitting a sweater like that because I think that there will be a colour there. And to, and to that end as well, if you've got something that's more pastel and really soft and beautiful, um, our Merino Soft Baby, a lot of those have now come into stock and I'm going to tell you about, um, we've got more of them that have just arrived and been loaded. So it's so good to have those back. The other yarn that um, also from Outlaw, or the, the Baby Bandit obviously from Bandit Yarns, but then also from Outlaw as well, at that gauge, that 25 stitch gauge, on a 3.25 millimetre needle. If you want something that will look a little bit more rustic with a wee bit more texture, similar to what Libby's used and you can't source that Falklands yarn, um, Outlaw Bohemia Sport, all day long all day long and I've just gone and put just I mean I've just gone and grabbed grab those from uh, oopsie come here from random there you go I just think they would look incredible all day long boho sport for that for sure and again a lot of you I know have got part balls of boho sport sitting around um 50 grams I mean I'm working on the biggest size here 50 meters rather 50 meters on boho sport is about a third of a ball so you know, if you've got anything from a quarter to a third of ball of something left over from another project, um, you've got enough for your accents. Um, and, you know, there's nothing saying. I mean, like Libby's gone and done these accents both on cuffs and collars, but there's nothing to say that the accents have to be the same at the cuffs and the collars. Um, if you haven't got enough, you could actually do one colour that's a complete accent or bounce it around. You're in charge. Um, play around, be a bit adventurous with colour, but I have to say if you're wanting that more textured feel and that really in the coziness of bohemia sport in this i just think would be a match made in heaven the other thing that i really like as well is the three uh, bohemia sport and 3.25 millimeter needles i know it's a little bit firmer than 
what you would usually use. People generally use a 3.5 or 3.75 for boho sport. I really like it on that smaller needle. I find that you get a really lovely, uh, rich, lush fabric from that slightly firmer tension. Um, and so for, for me personally, it's something that I really enjoy. Uh, so yeah, I think, I mean, if I'm going to knit this, this, this for me all the way. Um, again, Sockmetician, I know a heap of you have this left over from floozies. So if you've done a floozy and you've got contrast colours left over and you're looking for something to use those contrast colours up with, there you go. Maiden will be perfect in your leftover Sockmetician edition. And the other one I've plucked out as well, if you're wanting a really beautiful, soft, to the, to the touch, weird of the skin, um, yarn for Maiden is Legacy. Legacy, I think, would be utterly perfect for this. And also, it, it, and with the smaller sizes too, like, actually, let's run through some of the sizing. So I've sort of glossed over that before. She, as always, has written um, a huge range of sizes. Thank you, Libby. Um, I love the fact that even though her, she's a tiny wee slight thing herself, Libby, so many of her designs are so wearable for all shapes and sizes, and they're easily customizable, which is no small thing. So I am the queen, as you know, I am the queen of alterations and modifications because I want to make sure that whatever garment that I get, I feel comfortable in and confident in. And with Libby's, um, I very rarely have to do that because they are such classic designs that they will look good on so many body types and body shapes, and they are easily customizable if you choose to. So she's got these starting in terms of um, bust measurements from 33 inches all the way up to nearly 61 inches. Um, and if you're a metric, that's an 83 to a 152. Now, that's huge, 7.5, um, seven and a half centimetres positive ease. So to put that into context for you, it's seven and a half centimetres positive ease. For someone like me, because I'm a bit of a bit of a pear, as we all know, see, I would be inclined to probably go with this because I'd, I'd like it quite roomy. I'd be looking at either the 47 um, or the 49 inch uh, for the room, and then I would make modifications to to give me more of an A-line, because that's me. I just prefer to do that. Um, but that's, you know, to be honest with you, that's right smack bang in the middle of her size range. And I'm a size 22. So, you know, you could comfortably, this goes up to really, really generous sizings. Um, and again, I am, I'm going to, I know I say this a lot, but if you are somebody who is, you know, that does worry about their size and about looking at the sweater going, oh, I don't know, Always check that upper bust measurement. Don't be afraid to actually knit a smaller size to that upper bust measurement because you actually, it's really more flattering for us if we've got it nice and fitting up the top there because you can always add an extra stitching and extra room once you go up underneath it, below that bust line as you're moving down. And I've, of course, made the huge assumption that this was work top down, and I didn't check because it possibly isn't. Uh, I possibly didn't do that. I'm assuming you've done it top down because it is a raglan libs, but I probably got that wrong. Anyone who's already checked that out or bought it, let me know. Um, either way, it doesn't matter because if it's bottom up, all you need to do is you do it the reverse way. If it's bottom up, um, take your hip measurement and figure out what size that you want from your hip and then just add extra decreases in going up before you get to your new sizing, alter your sizing when you get to the top. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but don't be afraid to do it. I do it all the time. I honestly will knit sweaters in two different sizes, one size for the bottom half and one size for the top half, because I just know that my top half is one size and my bottom half is something different. It's just how I am. doesn't worry me. Um, and it's a really, really easy thing to do. So, yeah, it's it's lovely. Um so don't be afraid to do that. 
don't be afraid to do that. So that is called Maiden. It's by Libby. I will make sure I put the link um, in here for, for everybody. Uh, actually, in fact, let's go and find that now. Should we get, let's be proactive and organised and find that now. And the other thing I was thinking of doing and getting organised for, and I didn't today, is a new theme and get in, in doing a draw. And I'm just so disorganised, I'll be honest with you. I have not done it. I'll get there, I promise. Um, it's, you know, you know, this is the joys of being just, um, here we go, let's have a little look here on our notes. It is in the round, oh, it is top down. There we go, in the round and top down. Excellent. All right. I wasn't putting any, everybody off on the wrong track. Right. Here we go. So I've just going to pop that in there for everyone. And on the tube of you, I will make sure I do that as well. Um, what else? Oh, yes. Tell you what's back in stock. Um, pom-poms. I'm going to, we'll be having some rabbit fur pom-poms that will go up uh, hopefully by the end of today. Um, some of those have just arrived back. And Merino Soft. So there was a whole heap of Merino Soft I told you about uh, last week that came back in stock. A whole heap more has just come back in. So we now adding to what we've already got. So we've got white, we've got blue, we've got pink. What else did I say last week? Wisteria had come back in. We now have lemon, blush, peppermint tea, silver and pink. I know many of you were waiting particularly for the blush. So lemon, blush, peppermint tea, silver and pink are all now back in Merino Soft. So those Merino Soft... Um, that Merino Soft page isn't looking quite so sad as it was. Uh, Albertine Quarry Ridge. I was only talking to somebody about this yarn this morning, saying I'm not sure when it's going to be back, and head over to the mill for my meeting this morning, and there was the box sitting there for me to bring back. So Quarry Ridge is now back from Albertine. That's the Albertine Merino DK. Orb Fine Gold is also back. Uh, Lords in Warm is back. So that is the 14-ply cream that we have. And I know a number of you have been looking for that because you've been wanting to do some classic cabled Aran um, sweaters. And that 14-ply Lords is so perfect for that. So that is back. And Urban Deluxe Azure, which I know is that beautiful, rich, turquoisey blue like the one behind me, that is now back. And the picture I posted up this morning was Urban Mallard, uh, Erlen, Urban Hula Hoop, and Orb DK. And they are uh, Orb DK. Yeah, Orb DK and Gold, and they are all being bought as we speak. So they will probably be back um, by the time I chat to you again on Thursday. So they are on their way. Right. I hope you enjoyed that. I really, oh, see, this is the thing. Now that I've got my mojo back, my knitting mojo back, I'm itching to get through the gold wing, and I really like the look of that maiden. I just love a good, simple sweater. It's, it's For me, it's such a comforting, wonderful thing. Um, now, has anybody got any questions before I before I b -b 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 buzz off? I can um, let you know. Everyone, it sounds like it's super sunny where everybody is. Um, it is, oh, here we go. Um, what is the top? Oh, thank you. But it was the top that the poncho type. Oh, the poncho top. That, um, right, this. Okay. This is another one of Marie's favorite, famous. Um, she's going to write this pattern up eventually, ponchos. Okay, so this poncho, and it's actually very similar to the poncho that's behind me here. This one. Uh, the poncho, the, the, these ponchos are the easiest things in the world to make. It's essentially just a big rectangle. Um, this one here, I have actually done some really, um, it's got a garter stitch base, which keeps everything nice and flat, and it has got a short row in it. So I do need to get onto that to write this up. What I love about this one that I'm wearing is, so, it was so cold when I came to work this morning. This is um, Malabrigo Rasta, which is um, beautiful, soft, super chunky yarn. And I've gone and mixed it with a whole heap of double-stranded lusciousness. So I've alternated it between the Malabrigo Rasta and in here, the ones in between, it is a, how many strands have I got in there? I have one strand of three strands, triple stranded. So I've got one of them is a brushed mohair. Um, these are all from Stash, by the way. One's a brushed mohair. One is a bright lime-colored 
uh, really bright, liney um, DK. And then the third one I've got a far... Oh, yes, I know what the third one is. The third one is Wildflowers from White Gum Wool, which is a beautiful multi that we do for White Gum. And I had some of that left over. And so I triple-stranded them and then just did them in these stripes. And then essentially, once I got to a length, sewed a seam in the rectangle and then picked up a um, collar on circular needles and then just knitted myself a big short collar. Um, I have actually written the notes down for this to do it as a pattern. I've also done, if you've been to the shop, I have actually also done this in Albertine as well in a DK um, and I've done multiple sizings. What I love about this, with the exception of the short collar, which I did on a circular needle, but you don't have to if you don't want to, um, the whole thing's done on straight. Um, I think I did the um, Albertine one, I just did it on the 6mm or 5mm, it might have been, straight needle. This was done on a, I think this was done on a 15mm needle. So yeah, really fast. I, I mean, seriously, I, I knitted the Stephen B inspired me to knit this. Um, after having some time with him for can, I just, and he, you know, just playing around with colour and texture with him, you can't help but get inspired um, and so yeah it was his inspiration that got me making this and it's yes I mean, it's, oh boy I needed it this morning freezing when I came to work this morning so so cold so yeah I will if it Kimber I promise I will eventually get it written up it's on Marie's never never pain I'm hope I know I'm hopeless I'm so hopeless I'm dreadful but honestly, you can make a poncho. If anyone wants to make a poncho, um, the one behind me here, see this one's done in garter stitch. I didn't make this one, but it's just done, it's a garter stitch rectangle. So you can just do that and then pop, pop a side seam in it. And they've actually done a very similar thing. They've literally just gone and picked up those stitches and done a short collar at the top. Easiest thing in the world to do. Um, it's, it's, you know, if you're looking for a poncho, that's why I'd do it. It's so easy. There's no shaping. It's just fast, fast and comfortable, and at this time of year, so easy to throw on. So, yeah, there you go. Right, I'm going to get, get back to it because I'll get a newsletter out for everybody, uh, pop some details in about Maiden and also what's coming back in stock. And I will see you here again on Thursday. Really looking forward to Thursday. I'll have Lisa with me from uh, Rural Women, R Rural Women New Zealand. And we will talk, we'll talk about what, what it is that they do, uh, how they work in our community, and a fantastic, fantastic program that they have running uh, with knitting, hand knitting. So I will be talking to her, I promise, I promise, 11 o'clock on Thursday. But until then, uh, have a great week. I will see you then. Um, happy stitching and stay warm. I think it's going to be a bit of a chilly week. All right, until then.